welcome to my channel. Today I'm talking about the algorithm that is reality. Somebody asked me if I would talk about this a little bit more and sort of elaborate on how I work with this in order to create my life as I go. And that is the way that I'm going to describe this. I'm not a huge lover of the term manifesting, to be quite honest, because that sounds like something you've got to tap into to make work, this magical thing. It is a magical thing, as far as I'm concerned, because I don't get it. Um, but I don't really see it in that way. I think that I'm just creating my life as I go. Simple as that. So how do I work with that? First of all, let's talk about the, the very subtle ways in which this works on an ongoing basis, all day, every day. I don't know if you've noticed, you would have noticed, throughout the day and every day as you go on through life, you will notice subtle feelings that you have and then something happens in accordance with that subtle feeling that you've had. You don't necessarily put it together with this. You just think, oh, that's weird. I thought about that earlier. And it's just very, very subtle sometimes, isn't it? I've had subtle, such subtle sort of thoughts about people and things and places and stuff. And then it's shown to me, maybe the very afternoon, something along those lines has shown to me. Now, that's what, so what I see is, that's the algorithm, and it is guiding me through life. Based on those subtle feelings, it's gently guiding me in the direction that I'm feeling. So when I'm feeling those subtle feelings, I'm being guided that way. And it might just be something I see on the TV that goes along with what I've thought. It might be a person that I hear from. It might be an opportunity that comes along for me. It can be absolutely anything dependent on those feelings that I've had. So that is all natural. And we do that without thinking very much about it. The algorithm is just working as it works. There you go. Okay, simples. And then we have intentional creation manifesting. I know that you guys call it that, so I, you know, I, I'm going to go with the flow here. Um, in doing it intentionally. Now that, as soon as you do that, you are on a bit of a different level anyway, because you are in trying mode. You are generally always in trying mode when you, as soon as you decide to manifest something intentionally you go into trying mode. Trying mode starts from a place of not having. So the feeling, your reference point is, I don't have this, I need to get this because I don't have it. So there you go. To start with, the algorithm is then working differently for you because it's not it's not a different algorithm, but you have, but you are not working with the flow of the algorithm then because you are trying, but don't worry about that because that, that initial, when any of us do that, when I do that, it's gonna be the same thing too. So we just know that, we have to be aware of that, but we become aware of the fact that, okay, now I am trying to get something. Okay, now what is a trying energy? How will this be read? This is an algorithm, how will it be read? It will be read as I don't have this at the moment. I'm trying for it because I don't have it. So it's read because it can only read it in very simple terms, this imaginary algorithm, <laughs> which works for me. Um, and it's really useful to look at it this way because you see it as a kind of a, a thing then, an actual thing, and it's much easier to work with. So what's it? So it's gonna read that signal and it's going to, okay, you don't have it, here you go. So first off, when we start wanting to manifest something, we don't have it, we're looking to get it. So we have to become very aware of that and very aware of the way that this algorithm works and we can't change it. We are not gonna be the exception to the rule that forces and forces and forces 3D reality to change. And when people tell me that they have done that, I would say, no, you haven't done that. But what you have done is you've gone through this force energy, which hasn't produced anything. And then you've either got fed up and thought it isn't going to happen. And you've had a relief feeling in some way, a release feeling in some way. So you've stepped away from it. So yes, that stuff that you've done. That's why I always say that these things are never going to waste. If you feel like you're not seeing what you're wanting and you're wasting your time. And yes, you will be if you carry on and on and on with it. But there will come a point where this stuff shows. So then what happens is the person has that release. So then they are working with the algorithm because they don't have that tight grip on, on the thing that they want. So then it shows to them and they think it's because they put in all of this work, but it isn't. It's because they were in a release energy. They wanted, they released, but they may have put in six months worth of work and feel that it's that six months that got it, but it isn't that as far as I'm concerned, it's nothing to do with that. It's all to do with that release. I've got so many examples from my own life where this has been the case and I don't want to hammer on about them because I've done that before and I don't want you guys to think, oh, well, I've heard this story before. Um, if you want to hear more stories like that, join as a free member on my members area and there's tons of stuff on there that you can listen to. 
Okay, so there you go. So we need to be working with the algorithm, not against it, because if we're working against it, it, again, it's like typing into the Google search, bright red shoes, when what you actually want is yellow shoes. Well, you're gonna see stuff that comes up for bright red shoes, but why, why, you don't want that, you want yellow shoes. So you've typed in the wrong search. So look at it this way. You are feeling something different than the thing that it is that you want and the algorithm will only read what you're feeling it will not read what you desire it, it will just read your feeling state and if your feeling state says i don't have it where is it oh my god um this is never going to happen that's what it's reading all of the time because it can't do anything else okay so now we're aware of that that's the key that was the key to me to be aware of what i was feeling i thought hang on how can i get this when i'm feeling this well, I can't if I see this like an algorithm. So, so then we're aware. So there is a formula. As far as I'm concerned, the formula is this. You intend something. So you get real clarity on what it is that you want. Because often we have not got clarity on what we want. We've got a lot of stuff buzzing around in our minds. And so one minute we want it like this. Then we want it like that. So that's so jumbled up and it's no clear signal. So we get a clear signal, first of all. So imagine this, when I get clarity on this, my signal is going to be really, really clear. Cannot be read in any other way. I'm gonna get clarity on it. You get that clarity. And then you've got that clarity, write it down. It's really good to write it down. I do that if I really need some clarity on something because my brain is all over the place. Okay, and then you decide, right, okay, this thing that I want, exactly as I want it here, this sentence that I've constructed has a feeling. So I need to now tap into that feeling because when I tap into that feeling, the algorithm can only read the feeling. So do it for 30 seconds, put your timer on and, and um, evoke a feeling of whatever it is that you want for 30 seconds. So when I say that, what I mean, so this is energetic, it's a signal, an energetic signal. When I say this, what I mean is, how would you feel right now? If you had this thing, how would it feel? Don't worry about, you're not convincing your rational brain of anything here. You're not trying to convince yourself that this is true. This is, this is purely an exercise in finding a feeling. That's all that you're doing. And you don't have to worry about whether you believe it or not. It's irrelevant. And I know that for a fact, because I don't believe half the stuff that I do this with that comes to me. So don't even worry about that. You do that. And then you, the, the next, so I would suggest if you're new to all of this, I would only do this once, but then I so practiced at this. Um, so I would suggest set yourself a week. I am going to find the feeling of this three times a day for a week, then job done. Then you go on to the next stage, which is it is done. There's nothing more I can do. I'm going to release this now, whichever way that you do that, you can see yourself blowing it, blowing your wish, your intention, up into the sky, you can just see yourself as releasing a balloon, anything like that. Or if you're finding real attachment with this particular thing, you can see it tethered to you, whatever it is, and then you cut the tether and then you let it go. Okay, this is really speaking, you only need to do this exercise once. Because you are new to this, maybe you'll do it a few times, but this is my formula. And this is, I don't use anything else. This is all that I do. I wouldn't write things down. I wouldn't affirm. I wouldn't set um, boards, you know, what do you call them? Dream boards, you know what I mean? Vision boards. I wouldn't do anything like that. I just wouldn't bother because I know that all I need to do is this. And probably the best thing for me to say to you is because if this is new to you, the final part, the allowing, the releasing is the most important part because if you can do the other two, great, that's brilliant. But if you can't do that final step, you can't let it go to a certain extent, then you will struggle and you will think this isn't working, but it is. And whatever happens, it is there. So when you do get to a more released point at some point, that's when it comes in. And that's when you think, well, I don't think I manifested that because I haven't really done anything. We did because we don't do anything day in, day out. We create our life as we go, but we don't think, oh, I wonder if that's going to happen now. It's just happening constantly. I mean, I literally thought about a client the other day and heard from them the next day and haven't heard from them. This is a business client. Hadn't heard from them in like literally a year. I only thought, wondered about how they were doing. I wonder about friends and things all of the time. And then they contact me because I so but know that this is what's going on. So I have no attachment to it at all. That's not to say that I don't ever suffer attachment. I do. Sometimes I will feel that attachment to something. A really good thing that you can do to help yourself get on in line with the algorithm Feel your, know that your attachment is there and change the feeling of it. Because at the moment, have a really negative feeling because you'll think, this means I can't get and I'm attached and I'm too attached. Just drop that feeling and just think, 
and try and sort of evoke a different feeling around it. Like, oh, I love this feeling. I love this feeling because it means that this, this is so important to me and I'm going to get this. It's, I love this feeling. So you sort of give a different uh, uh, meaning to that thing that you are dealing with. Just give a different meaning to it. We can give a different meaning to anything. It doesn't matter. There's nothing judging and saying, well, that's the wrong meaning that goes with that. It's not. It's all that you think. That's what I do. If I ever notice a real negative feeling inside of me, I think, oh, that's no good for me. If I can't drop it, I change the feeling of it. So I think, okay, it feels like, how does it feel? Ooh, it feels like this. Don't want that feeling. So let's change it for a feeling of pure love pure joy or excitement. I can do it with anything. But again, it took me a while to practice that, but it's a brilliant one to do because everything is about how you feel and the algorithm can only read those feelings. It doesn't care what word you've attached to it. It doesn't care what you think it is. It only cares what it feels, what you're feeling attached to it is because that's the only thing that it can read. And it doesn't care anyway, in any case. It does not care. It's just there. It's a program running. I don't understand it but it completely works for me this way. And this is how I see it. So it's a bit like seeing it like a computer to me really helps me because I'm not a particularly spiritual person. I don't think that I am. So all that stuff doesn't work for me. So I have to see it in more of a, uh, that kind of a thing. Um, you could see it like a simulation, uh, anything like that, that you are controlling. You know, if the general stuff doesn't work for you that you see online, just change it. It really doesn't matter. There are no rules whatsoever. Even if you have a deep rooted feeling or belief about something, and you do, but you decide you want something, you kind of know that you have a bit of a limiting belief going on there. If you had that pure feeling of seeing that thing in your life, and then you've managed to release it, it will, it is stronger than that program that's running. You might just, you might notice that you have to deal with the program. Let's say you see a glimpse of that thing that you want and then it kind of goes away again. Then you might think, why has that happened? Okay, maybe I've got a program running there that's kind of interfering. It's, it's kind of contributing to the signal that you get back. That's basically what it's doing. Look at it like this. Okay, what, what could be there? Okay, and just tell yourself, it's not real. That's not real. That's just something that I have made up. It is not real. So what you do is you then counteract um, its contribution. So its contribution becomes so tiny that it isn't relevant. What I really don't want to do here is make this really, really confusing and, and say too much, like overdo it. So that you have to keep looking at it thinking, oh, am I doing it right? You're never doing it wrong. It's what it is for you. What the feeling is for you is right. It doesn't matter because we, I can't really explain my feelings to you. I can tell you that I evoke a feeling, but I can't tell you what that feeling is like because we cannot explain those things because they are completely personal to us. So whatever it is to you is right. There's no right, there's no wrong. Honestly, it's a case of practicing those feelings to, and knowing that this algorith algorithm it is... The simpler you can make it and the less attachment that you have, the easier it is, the quicker it comes. Now, some people will say to me, well, I've been trying to manifest a person for two years, for example. I'm not reaching out to them. I'm not doing any of the things I shouldn't be doing, but it hasn't happened. Um, again, it depends on your feeling state. Just because you haven't been reaching out and doing all of those practical things, those outward 3D things, if you're feeling the lack of it constantly, imagine that that's your signal. I don't have it, where is it? Everybody else is getting, I don't. That, all of those things are your signals. So obviously, you, so you're just going to get more and more of that back. You're gonna get more things in life that show you that this is the case that you don't have because that is what the algorithm is reading. So in order to get, and like some people will say, well, I didn't have attachment and I wanted a person back in my life, wanted my ex back, didn't have attachment and it never, ever happened. Well, there's definitely something going on in there. So maybe you never set a clear intention with great clarity of what you did want. And maybe you never, you never felt that. You just never got clear on what it was that you wanted. And I have found that I need to be clear because I have had such mixed things come to me in the past where I've thought, well, it's a bit of that, but it's this, this, and this. And then I, so I, I kind of enjoyed that part of it. And I saw that as experimenting. I thought, okay, why has this happened like this? And I could go deep inside of me and work out why things had happened the way that they'd happened, where I'd got what I wanted, but not quite. I could really see it. So it's a case of being aware and like, what's going on inside of me? Okay, what can I do about this? How can I work with the algorithm? And how, did I ever get clear on what I wanted? Um, I can honestly say that every 
person that I've been with, an ex at the time that has kind of ended and I've not necessarily wanted it to end. Maybe I ended it but didn't really want it to end or I've always had those feelings of kind of wanting it back. Everyone, I've had loads of exes, but you know, everyone has at some point shown back up in my life, whether it was at a time whether I could do anything about it or not is a different thing, but it has happened. But again, I the clarity I would have had, the signal, oh, oh, I want this again, you know, that's simple, isn't it? But if you've got that mixed up with other stuff, if you know that you can manifest, it often gets mixed with other stuff. But when you don't know that you can manifest, it, it doesn't so much because you're just having that feeling and you have no idea that you can do anything about it. So it's actually quite clear, quite pure, that feeling, because you haven't mixed it up with anything else, because it's not relevant, because you don't know. So it keeps that signal much more on point, which is... So sometimes people will say, I wish I didn't know about this. And I went through a stage of that. But the thing is, then you're going around life blindly not knowing. And these things are happening. When good things happen, you can, it's great and it's brilliant. And you enjoy it, but you can never really pinpoint why it did. You don't know why it happened. So you might then miss out on other great stuff that could happen. If you can learn how to work with this algorithm, there will be times when you get stuck. There are times when I get stuck, but I kind of work around that. And I always say to myself, well, if it doesn't happen, it isn't the end of the world. I'm gonna be all right. I'm not, you know, it's not gonna kill me if it doesn't happen because that really, really helps you. And all that helps you do is kind of release a little bit on that attachment and just allows a bit more of a, of a purer signal. It's all about your signal. Again, people will disagree with me, of course they will, but this is the way that I see it. And because somebody asked me to explain it, I, I've gone sort of briefly into this in the past, but I don't think I've gone into it in the best possible way. I kept going on about it being like the Google search before, and I think I spent too much time talking about that because I am also an SEO specialist, but other people aren't, and I don't think, I think it was a bit, you know, I think some people really got it and then some people just didn't. So I'm hoping that this really clarifies what I mean. See it like in this way, uh, and um, it just becomes, for some of you, it's going to be a lot easier seeing it this way and to be able to really be aware of those feelings without being completely control freaky about them because you don't want to get like that either. You want to think to yourself, the freer I am, the better I feel about this, um, the more I can treat this as a game, the faster these things are going to come to me. And when I, and I'm not going to just want, 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 because the thing is, it's fine to want, 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 but if you're always wanting the next thing, the next thing, you don't ever particularly appreciate that thing when it does come to you. So appreciate things that come to you. Think, I've done that. How freaking awesome is this? That I can manipulate energy to such a degree that I can get things show up in my life. How awesome is that? Right, I'm done. Stop. I'm going to stop because I could go on and on. You've got to stop at some point with these things, don't you? So there you go. I am an author. My books are all listed below. You can pick those all up on Amazon. Um, also, I have another one coming out really, really shortly, all based around. It's called It's All About Me. And it's um, all about, it's not all about me. It's kind of all about it being all about us. So um, hopefully that'll be useful to you guys. It's not really based around the law of attraction, but to be honest, it kind of is because if you're into it, it will really help you make this stuff work for you. Um, I offer Zoom coaching, I offer email coaching. I am getting so booked up at the moment because this channel is just really getting quite busy at the moment. It, it's growing much faster, at a faster pace, so I am getting really booked up. But go by all means, go along, see what I've got. I When I offer email coaching, I have to be careful that I don't offer it to too many people in one go because I really need to be able to give people a good service. And obviously I do Zoom coaching and I'm a writer and I've got other stuff going on. So you, it, there might be a little bit of a wait for you, but you know, first come, first served and I'll put you on a list and let you know when I've got that available time. And um, what else can I say? I have a podcast with my son every single week. That's called 5050, where we talk about all things law of attraction because it, I, I admittedly, it does become like a bit of a comedy show in parts because we've got very similar personalities and we like having a laugh and that we can't help. Um, so we do go off on a tangent quite a lot, but hopefully you'll just be able to pick up some really great nuggets of information there and how we both make it work for us. And now, I'm not going to say another thing. I'm going to stop it here. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. If you are a new subscriber, it's really great to have you here. It's um, This channel is more based around um, making this stuff work for you and not kind of technique based because there's, there's loads of that out there. There's some really great stuff out there. There's no point in me adding again to what's already out there. I'd rather the content I'm coming out with now is the stuff that I would have really loved, dearly loved to have found when I was trying to make this work for me and couldn't find not much of it anyway. So hopefully this will help you 
on your journey to world domination. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching.